Howdy folks and welcome back to World of Warships with Rear Admiral Jingles. So, what's the significance of today's video title? Well, Dick Deadeye was the name of the villain in the Gilbert and Sullivan Victorian comic opera HMS Pinafore. It's actually a character that I played in my high school musical. And so of course today's video is mostly going to be about the Deadeye skill. Now don't worry, I'm not going off on a rant about it. I feel that everything that needs to be said about the Deadeye skill in particular and the Commander skill rework in general has already been said. Instead, we're going to be just taking a look at some battleship gameplay from people who are making use of that particular skill. Because, let's face it, why wouldn't you? 10% more accurate guns for an investment of only 10 skill points? I mean, hell yeah. Now, Bear in mind that Wargamer have already acknowledged that the Commander skill rework in general, and the Deadeye skill in particular, uh, needs a bit more work. So there is a Commander skill rework rework on the way. But for now, we're pretty much stuck with it for the immediate future. So it's hardly surprising that Battleship Captains have been taken advantage of the benefits offered by the Deadeye skill. Including, but by no means limited to, Starter 2015 here in the French Tier 7 battleship, the Lyon. The Lyon is remarkable in the sheer number of guns that it possesses. It's basically just a Tier 6 Normandy with an extra super-firing gun turret, but since each of these turrets are armed with four guns, that gives the Lyon a 16-gun broadside. And in fact, the potential Alpha Strike of the Leon's broadside is only bettered by tier 10 battleships like the Conqueror, the Vermont, the Montana and the Grosser Kurfürst. But that's just potential main battery broadside shell weight. Because there are two things that balance the Leon's absurd amount of potential alpha strike damage. The first is relatively poor armor piercing penetration performance and the second is the not terribly reliable accuracy of these guns. But when you add the Deadeye skill into the mix... <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh, come on now, Jingles. Anybody can just cherry-pick a moment where a battleship gets a lucky salvo and scores a lot of damage, and yeah, you're absolutely right. If only that was what was happening. Oh, hello, Mr. Cleveland. Hold on, wait for it. There's an enemy Kagero inside surface detection range. Deadeye buff is no longer active. Wait, Kagero's gone unspotted. Deadeye buff is back up. Shots out. Fortunately, the Cleveland has also picked the wrong time to turn out. And... Yeah. Best two out of three? <laughs> Alright. Challenge accepted. Just have to wait for the guns to reload first, of course. The Leon has standard battleship reload on its guns, 30 seconds. Gives you plenty of time to select your next victim. Yeah, I think it's going to be the Alba. Guns are loaded. Shots out. And... Wait for it. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> The Leon definitely does not have a reputation for being this accurate. That's because it isn't. Except when the Deadeye skill is active, a ship that is balanced by the horrible inaccuracy of its main battery guns is no longer quite as balanced. Nonsense jingles. This was clearly a fluke. All right, shall we go for four out of four? Shots out at the Nagato at a range of just over 16 kilometers, although it'll be slightly less than 16 kilometers by the time nine of the shots hit home, doing 12 and a half thousand damage and knocking out one of the Nagato's 16 inch gun turrets. Still not convinced? Okay, let's go for five out of five. Although the enemy carrier is about to score a bit of a bonanza with his torpedo bombers on the friendly Fuso just up ahead. Lefuso was not carrying a detonation flag, although he's earned a couple now. Shots out once again at the Nagato. Still no visible enemy ships within surface detection range, and another respectable kicking, although slightly less than 10,000 damage this time with only two actual penetrations. 
the fault for that, of course, being the not terribly great armor-piercing penetration values of the Leon's 340mm guns. If it's a fluke that you're looking for, however, try this, as he unloads at the dead-in-the-water Le Galissonnier, does not have the Deadeye buff active, and still manages to score eight hits, although seven of them are over-penetrations. It does kind of make a mockery of the uh, World of Warships wiki description of the Leon's firepower when used against cruisers. Devastating, and I'm quoting here, against lightly armoured targets. <laughs> cruisers can routinely be one shot from full health. Yeah. I mean, to be fair, he did nearly one shot the La Galissonnière, but that was only because he scored so many over penetrations. But that's always been the way in World of Warships. They tell you that your shells don't have very good armour penetration values. You fire at a battleship, you get nothing but shatters. You fire at a cruiser, you get nothing but overpens. Oh, by the way, there's some comedy about to happen on the other side of the map. Wait for it. There. A Jervis just rammed a Nagato. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, he did do 7,000 damage. Now, of course, Starter does not have the Deadeye buff, but, well, he's only 10 kilometers away from his opponent. So he doesn't really need it, does he? <laughs> Uh, what are you going to do? For those of you who maybe don't play World of Warships but still watch the videos, and I know that there are a surprising number of you out there who do fall into that category, what the Dead Eye buff actually does is it improves the accuracy of your guns by 10% when there are no visible, i.e. no spotted, enemy ships within your normal base surface detection range. Now. I have actually seen battleships complaining, battleships with the Deadeye skill, complaining when destroyers, cruisers, aircraft carriers, whatever, other ships on their team spot and reveal the location of, for example, previously hidden enemy destroyers inside that battleship's surface detection range. The battleship players were actually getting mad at their teammates for spotting ships that were trying to sneak up on torpedo and sink them because it meant that they were losing the buff from the Deadeye skill. It really is that stupid. Don't get me wrong, I like the Leon. I mean, it's definitely not a bad ship. It's not great, but it's definitely not bad. And in fact, I like to think that I've done my little bit for popularising the use of the Leon in Divisions. It can be absolutely hilarious when you have three Leons sailing around, all picking out the same target and firing at the same time. We, we call it the Leon Triple 48 Gun Salute Division. <laughs> but the reason it's effective isn't because the Leon's accurate, it's because there are three Leons firing 48 guns at the same time. The Leon was never supposed to be this accurate. Now, in the interests of complete transparency here, and just to be fair, I should point out that not every single salvo that Starter fires is anywhere near as devastating as the ones that we've been seeing up until now. Like this one, for example, which does a mere 960 damage to that Nagato. However, and I could be wrong here, I feel that the reason for that was more to do with some slightly dodgy aim on Starter's behalf and also the fact that the Nagato saw him and started to turn out. There were a couple of other shots subsequently where he failed to score in excess of 10,000 damage, and I do literally mean a couple, like two further salvos, but then he very, very quickly got back into his stride. Hang on, Jingles. That Ismail was inside his surface detection range. Well, yeah, he was, but he's in a Leon. <laughs> he's got 16 guns. This is the kind of range where you have to be careful when you're fighting with a Leon, because it's got 16 guns, it's also got fairly heavy secondaries. The issue is that the Leon is now, with the Deadeye skill, that effective at all ranges, not just as close as the Ismail got. I'm not, by the way, in case anybody's getting the wrong impression here, trying to say that Starter 2015 is some kind of scrub who's being carried purely by the Deadeye skill. That's absolutely not the case. He's pretty much been carrying his team and is working very well with the friendly Lexington that flushed that Mayhan out of cover. And... 
Oh, that's going to hurt. <laughs> and there's the Kraken Unleashed. And the Confederate Award. Yeah, the Confederate Award. Which means he's done at least 20% in hit points worth of damage to the majority of the ships on the enemy team. I think the Confederate Award is probably the best indicator of how valuable you have been to your team. Because, I mean, you know, everybody goes on about the Kraken Unleashed because, hey, five kills. And five kills is nothing. But you can get five kills while doing a pitiful amount of damage. But you have to work to get the Confederate Award. Starters had to spend the previous couple of minutes furiously dodging attacks from the enemy Shikaku, but as you can see, the Shikaku isn't exactly making things difficult for him, insisting on constantly throwing torpedo bomber squadrons at him. And the Leon does have a fairly impressive anti aircraft firepower. So why the Shikaku is insisting on continuing to throw depleted torpedo bomber squadrons at him instead of switching to full strength dive or rocket attack plane squadrons, I have absolutely no idea, but I'm pretty sure that Starter isn't complaining. Also, I can't help but feel that Starter should have probably switched to high explosive here, but well, then again, the Nagato is on such low health that it doesn't really make much difference either way. And yep, that's kill number six, and that just leaves the carrier who has finally realised that he has something other than torpedo bomber squadrons. Dive bombers coming in... Oh, didn't appear to do anything. Well, it was a full squadron, so they'll be back again for more. Here they come. No, wait, all shot down. Oh, friendly carrier to the rescue. Uh, Drop some patrol fighters on top of him. And of course, the Leon's anti-aircraft guns are pretty good. Enemy carrier spotted by the Lexington. Shots out, although only the two front turrets are able to fire. Eight shots. And again, this time the carrier is so close that he's getting no benefit from the Deadeye skill, but, well, this is the kind of range where the Leon is particularly dangerous anyway, so another 11,300 damage. Shikaku, again, realising that he does actually have full squadrons that he can use, and... Don't know why, but the AP dive bombers did basically nothing, but the high explosive rocket firing attack plane shaved off half of Starter 2015's remaining health. Because aircraft carrier logic. And now, at this kind of range, without the dead eye buff active, you're finally seeing what the Leon's guns are supposed to be like. With one salvo scoring 10,000 damage, the next, not. And this in the Leon is working perfectly as intended, because you have 16 guns to unload at the enemy. It doesn't really matter if, well, a lot of them don't actually hit anything. More dive bombers. Oh, there we go. That's what the armor-piercing bombs are supposed to be like. And that was a single bomb hit, by the way, because he shot down all but one of that dive bomber flight. So I have no idea what happened to the first time he used those dive bombers. Where are they? How many are left? Struggling to... No, I think he's managed to get them all. If the Lexington could spot that Shikaku again, and he has, fantastic. I'm sure Starter would be very happy. Because we've had about enough of that guy's shit. Shots out. This time, all 16 guns. And... Well, that's kill number 7. Starter 2015, making the most of the Deadeye skill in a ship that probably benefits more from it than most. As they say, make hay while the sun shines because the skill is either going away or it's being substantially reworked. While the skill is still here, however, I think the problem that most people have with it isn't that it turns decent ships like the Leon into things that are borderline overpowered, but the passive nature of the gameplay that it promotes encourages and rewards. And even some of the battleship players are starting to get a bit sick of it. Like Pinecones here in the US Navy Tier 10 battleship, the USS Montana. Pinecones, of course, has the Deadeye skill. I mean, of course he does. Why wouldn't you? For the investment of a mere 10 skill points, it's a complete no-brainer. Even on a ship like the Montana that has accurate guns to begin with, it's just the obvious choice to take for such a paltry investment of commander skill points. Particularly now post-commander skill rework that the alternatives, a brawling build or a 
survivability and tanking build in ships that were suited for it prior to the rework, those kind of builds now cost more points and are less effective than they were before the rework. So this whole multiple different skill choices across a broad range of ships is, well, a bit of a failure really, which of course is why they're reworking the rework. Nevertheless, this is what we currently have, and so, naturally, Pinecones would be a fool to not take it. That doesn't mean he has to enjoy it, however, because, under most circumstances, surfing around the back of the map, taking pot shots at distant targets every 30 seconds is as dull as dishwater. Pinecones would much rather, when the moment is right, get stuck in there and take the fight right into the enemy's face. Now, don't worry, I have absolutely no intention of making you sit through the entire 12 minutes of passive gameplay where Pinecones basically plays the Deadeye build. Patiently waiting until there's an actual opportunity for him to get stuck in and actually play the ship the way he likes to. So you're going to be watching the edited highlights of this battle, and there were some highlights, there were some amusing and interesting things that did occur before Pinecones finally decided that he'd had quite enough of this boring shit and decided no guts, no glory, chicks dig scars, and glory lasts forever. Although before any of that happened, there was an awful lot of this standard battleship with the Deadeye skill gameplay. Thrilling, exciting, about as interesting as watching paint dry. In fact, I could probably narrate paint drying, and it would be more interesting than this. However, here's one of those highlights I was talking about. Apparently, even in the Deadeye Age, you're still going to get battleships who did not get the memo, continue to confuse aggression with stupidity, and charge forward right into a Montana, a Yamato, a Des Moines, a Hindenburg, and yes, there is a daring inside that smokescreen. People often criticise the destroyers for not suiciding straight forward in an attempt to secure the caps at the start of the battle. I'm pretty sure nobody was ever going to criticise the Thunderer for not doing that, but that's pretty much exactly what he's trying to do anyway. Perhaps this wouldn't have been such a colossal waste if the Thunderer had noticed that the cap has already been flipped by the Shimakaze, but, well, he didn't. And to be completely honest, I'm not entirely sure that a player with such a dizzyingly poor grasp of situational awareness would ever have been much use to the team alive in the first place. Thankfully, however, the question of just exactly how much use he would have been to the team alive is now more or less completely academic. Because he's dead. Very shortly afterwards, it seems that there's something going around, and it's contagious, and the Thunderer wasn't the only one who had it. I think it's fairly safe to say, without much fear of contradiction, that the advent of the Dead Eye skill has resulted in the uh, cruisers being either extremely frustrated or extremely nervous as the battleships hang around at the back, it's often been up to the cruisers to push forward, uh, with often fatal consequences. The thing is, cruisers like the Hindenburg actually do quite well in the current meta, because like the Zhao, the Hindenburg is one of those ships that excels at long-range kiting and high-explosive spamming. So what possessed a ship like the Hindenburg to get right into that narrow channel where even his hydroacoustic search wasn't going to provide him much use against torpedoes other than to warn him that he was about to die because in a narrow channel like that there's not an awful lot of room to manoeuvre so knowing that the torpedoes coming is often worse because there's nothing you can do about it but well that's exactly what he did swiftly followed by the Minotaur <laughs> just really you know you're in a light cruiser, right? <laughs> you know there's an entire line of battleships just sitting here waiting for dumbass cruisers to do exactly this. And yet, dumbass cruisers continue to do exactly that. And not just the ones on the enemy team. Have a look at this Hindenburg. Yeah, that guy over there. What on earth is he doing? I think he's trying to get close enough to torpedo that... Well, not that Yamato, because that's not a Yamato, that's the Kremlin. That Yamato, because it's the only thing that makes any kind of sense out of what he's actually doing. I mean, not that what he's doing makes any sense, but you, you, you get what I mean. In fact, it's the Kremlin who's going to kill him. 
I suspect he's lost all of that health as a result of trying to get close enough to Torpedo or Yamato. But, yeah. There he goes, and it's the Kremlin. The team has, of course, also lost the Shimakaze. The Shimakaze bravely trying to recapture Point Alpha over there, but running into a Daring and a Halland in the process, which, of course, resulted in pretty much everybody else down there stopping what they were doing because, hey, look, it's a Shimakaze. <laughs> if there's anything that battleships are afraid of in the current meta, it's not even aircraft carriers, it's Shimakazes. Well, things continue in more or less this vein for the next 10 minutes or so, and by God, it was boring to watch. And for Pinecones, at least, it was extremely boring to play as well. He'd finally decided. I mean, look at where the rest of his battleships are. <laughs> I mean, look at that. <laughs> you know what? Fuck this shit. Enough's enough. He's asked the Worcester behind him for some radar coverage, because... You know, unlike the Thunderer at the beginning, he's aggressive, he's not stupid. There are still a couple of enemy destroyers around, and he would very much like to know that he's not about to sail into a torpedo ambush. The Worcester obliges. Everything looks okay, he's still got pretty much all of his health. It's time to start playing World of Warships. The team are technically winning, they're ahead on points, but only by the most narrow of margins, and the enemy team are about to flip that central cap, so that situation is going to change very, very soon. There is a brief moment of hope for the team, as the friendly Kremlin manages to take out one of the enemy Yamatos, but it's a false hope, because the friendly Thunderer and Yamato, who are still playing the Deadeye game up in the far northeastern corner of the map, are about to find out the hard way, that the only things that are benefiting from the Deadeye meta more than the battleships camping the back of the map are the Shimakazis hunting them. Four against seven, behind on points, behind on caps, is now the moment to start doing something about it? Has he left it too late? Because, I don't know, rushing in blindly didn't do the first Thunderer any good, but then again, running away didn't do the second Thunderer and the Yamato any good either. There are three Tier 10 battleships around that corner, not just the Montana and the Thunderer that he can see, but there's also a Yamato around that corner. And there are still two enemy destroyers unaccounted for. Now he is getting some long-range fire support from the Kremlin parked between the two islands over here, but he's backing up rather than moving forward. So long-range fire support is about all that Pinecones can reasonably expect from him. He backs up a little further, because he has a sneaking suspicion that the three ships that he knows are around that corner are not the only enemy ships that are watching him. Continues backing up, and he's still spotted. There is definitely at least one enemy destroyer around here. Again, he lets the team know, spotted here, anybody have radar? There are two Worcesters although only one is reasonably inside radar range. And once again, the closest Worcester is only too happy to oblige. He's probably relieved that at least one battleship on the team is taking the initiative. The Kremlin has just been burned down. There are now only three of them against six enemies. They're way behind on points, and the enemy team have two of the cap circles, so the point situation is not getting any better. The Worcester's radar has revealed the enemy Shimakaze, who is in a position to get shot at by at least one. Unfortunately, still no sign of the Halland, and still no sign of the Daring. However, there are some torpedoes, there is at least one of those two enemy destroyers around, but the time for caution is long gone. The team's going to lose unless somebody finds their balls. Pinecones straps on his man pants, Gets ready to give the good news to the Yamato, hopefully, before the Yamato can give the good news to him. Doesn't sink the Yamato, although he paddles him to within an inch of his life, which is kind of unfortunate. Even more unfortunate is the fact that the Halland has just been spotted. Right next to a smokescreen, and the Halland doesn't have a smokescreen. So that means the Daring's there, too. The two enemy destroyers are smart enough to stay out of radar detection range of the Worcester. Nothing whatsoever that Pinecones can do about that now. Finishes off the Yamato. Takes the Halland torpedoes on the chin. Thankfully they were Halland torpedoes and not daring torpedoes. If they had been, he would be dead. Thundra and Montana desperately trying to take advantage of this brief moment of crossfire and finish him off before 
well, he doesn't actually have that much of a heal going. <laughs> He's taking so much damage. Shots out at the Daring. He's got him. And now the Halland. He's managed to get some shelter from the Thunderer and the Montana. With the island between the two of them. Which is not much consolation because he is on fire. Everything's on cooldown. And the Halland is, of course, continuing to shoot. But the guns are reloaded. He manages to squeeze some shots off right before he's finished by the enemy Montana, and his shots strike home, killing the Halland, earning him the Kraken Unleashed, as well as the Just a Flesh Wound Award. The enemy Montana on very, very low health, with one of the Worcesters piling shots into him, which is kind of unfortunate because it means the Worcester is visible to the Montana, and he's sitting broadside on in open water 15 kilometers away from a Montana. Never underestimate your team's ability to snatch defeat from the jaws of victory. But then again, I mean, while it would have been nice to not lose an almost full health Worcester when you're nearly 200 points behind, and that leaves the surviving cruiser outnumbered 2 to 1, the first Worcester did manage to flip that central cap at Bravo. So now it's all down to his division mate in the surviving Worcester. Dog's box over there. He can still win this. Despite being 200 points behind, all he has to do is flip that cap. Because look at the map. Look at how far away the Thunderer and the Montana are. And neither of them are slow battleships. So it's all down to this Worcester. If he has the sense to flip this cap, and then turn around and run the hell away. They might be able to do it. And there's very little chance that the Thunderer or the Montana are going to be able to do anything about it because they're cruising around at the back of the map. They're too far away from the cap points. They're too far away from the Worcester. The Worcester's always going to see them first unless they manage to sneak up on him from around the side of an island. But look at how far away they are. Realistically, what are the chances of that happening? And I'm happy to be able to report that this Worcester is not trying to win harder and sink those two remaining low health enemy battleships. He's doing exactly what he needs to do in order to win this game and stay alive. Which of course is the last surviving ship on the team he would have to do anyway in order to win this game. So he flips the cap, he turns the ship around and he diddy mows the hell out of there. Dog's box in the Worcester is now only 30 points behind. There's more than a minute of the game remaining, and he has all three of the caps, with very little chance of the Montana or the Thunderer being able to flip either Capture Point Bravo or Capture Point Charlie, and certainly not Capture Point Alpha. It's quite remarkable that the last surviving ship in a random battle actually knows what he needs to do in order to win, and then does it. It's even more remarkable in the Deadeye meta that the last surviving ship on a team in a battle is a cruiser <laughs> instead of a battleship. But, well, that's what we've got. And to their credit, the enemy team realise that they've lost and are offering congratulations in chat for what eventually did become a very well-played battle. And hopefully, fingers crossed, you never know your luck, when Wargaming get around to reworking the Commander Skill rework, and they either get rid of or drastically change that god-awful Deadeye skill, we'll start seeing more battles that play out more like the last five minutes of this one than the previous 15 minutes, which was like watching paint dry. One can but hope. You never know. Personally, I can't wait. Although, realistically, it's probably a couple of months off, and for the immediate foreseeable future, we're still going to have to put up with shit. Like the first 15 minutes of this battle. Nevertheless, I do hope you enjoyed today's video, and I hope it's given you something to talk about in the comments, because that's it. As always, take care, stay safe, and I'll catch you next time.